The requirements under ISO 27000 around A8, Human Resource Security, or Personnel Security, are quite simple. They're broken up into three subsections. Uh, the first one is controls that you might want to put in place before someone joins you, controls that you might want to put in place while someone's working for you, and then finally controls that you might want to put in place when someone terminates or changes the role within the organisation. So let's have a look at those three sections. The first section is the controls to put in place prior to someone coming to join you. And again, the common one there, for example, is to have a screening policy. In other words, when people are presenting themselves for interview or before you employ someone, there are probably certain checks that you will want to do to make sure there's no unnecessary risk there. You'll also want to make sure, and the standard recommends, that if they have security requirements, that those are built in to their job roles and their terms and conditions of employment. So it's absolutely clear, and they accept that the responsibilities that they're taking on. If we look at the second subsection then, the controls that you want to put in place when someone's working for you. Uh, the main one here is the training and requirement. And again, ISO 27001 makes a very clear requirement that you must look at user awareness and training requirements for all of your staff inside a scope and also subcontractors potentially who would work inside your scope. It's a very important clause to get right. I'll be honest with you, it's probably the single most important clause in ISO 27001. With a lot of the other clauses, I could write you policies or procedures which in theory comply with the standard. None of them, however, are any use unless everyone understands them, are aware of them, and are following them. And you achieve that by user awareness and training. The third subsection in of personnel security is in relation to when someone is leaving the organisation or changing the roles. And again, this is an entirely new section. There are three clauses under this section, and they weren't there before 2005. They were put in because increasingly certification bodies like ourselves saw many problems in organisations when people changed the role or left the organisation. So in 2005, these three new clauses were added. So what did they require? Well, it's quite simple. When someone leaves, there should be a structured process to ensure that any assets that they hold for the organisation are returned. Now, big assets like cars and computers do tend to get returned. Companies don't tend to miss those. But it's the smaller assets that you might lose, and that's what the standard is asking you to look at. Importantly, it can also include information assets. Now, this isn't really about confidentiality. If I know something, it's almost, well, it is impossible for you to get that back from me when I leave the organisation and prevent me leaving with that knowledge. But no, what the standard is asking you to do is consider, am I the only person with that knowledge? And if I leave, is the organisation going to lose that knowledge? So this is really all about succession planning and making sure that that knowledge is shared or proceduralized so other people have it when I leave.